What if you could improve mobility without ever stretching? In this video, I want to discuss how I use breathing strategies to not only improve mobility, but to also decrease patient's pain. Now, I know what you're thinking. It sounds too good to be true, right? Well, let me paint a picture that is probably a very familiar one if you're in the physical therapy world or even if you're in the strength and conditioning world. Let's say that a patient or a client comes in and you're performing an upper extremity assessment. And when you go to look at shoulder internal rotation, you find that the right side is limited, but it's also more limited than the left. How many times do you see this? It's really common that that right side is usually more limited than the left. And then after you're done performing your assessment, the traditional thought process is to then stretch the tight muscle. So then we prescribe something like a sleeper stretch. And what happens is that the patient finds that they get a very short window of mobility from maybe a sleeper stretch if it didn't cause them pain. And then they think they're all set, right? Or they're satisfied that they saw an improvement in mobility. Well, then they come back for their sessions later on in the week and they're back to where they started. They don't have internal rotation on that right shoulder. So what's going on here, right? Well, in order to A, get instant results with mobility, but B, get long-term results with mobility, we need to start to change the pattern. The person that is in front of you is coming in with a very specific pattern, i.e. various areas of compression and expansion. Areas that are compressed are going to be tight, which is going to produce limited range of motion. Areas that are expanded are going to provide normal or even hyper mobility areas. So the person that's in front of you that has limited right shoulder internal rotation is in a pattern of anterior compression that is providing them with their limitation of internal rotation at the shoulder. So to fix that, we need to change the pattern. And to do that, we need to start with breathing because breathing is going to help to expand the area that's compressed. You see, when you just stretch an already compressed area, you usually start to wear out joints or you do so in a way that's not advantageous. But B, it's just short term because you're pushing into an area that's already compressed and the body likes to fight back, which then it usually compresses more and that person doesn't get that long-term result. So if this is the reason, because it's too compressed, we need to provide the patient strategies to expand here. We open up this, we open up our internal rotation on our shoulder. So that's how we can instantly do it, because once we get this moving, they're gonna have the space to move into that. But also the bigger one of the two, it provides long-term relief because we are continuing to drive this new pattern into the patient's programming and treatment. And it's, it's sort of like riding a bike, right? Once you learn how to ride a bike, you can take a couple years off, come back to a bike and you don't need training wheels, right? So that's a pattern, that's a learned pattern, a learned skill. So what I wanna do is walk you through strategies as to how we can start to expand here to start to improve long-term mobility restrictions that your patients or clients might be facing. So we can't really discuss the strategies without understanding the why behind it, right? We need to really know why we are doing something and the outcome that we are looking for and really how do we achieve that based on our execution. So if we break down the compression at this anterior chest wall leading to limited internal rotation of the shoulder, the true problem is that the patient or client in front of you cannot bring the rib cage down on exhalation, hold that rib cage down, and then take an inhale. Because if they can, if they can exhale, get the rib cage down, and hold enough 
eccentric tension on their obliques and six pack abs to a degree, then the air has no option but to go here, right? How do we know that? Well, air is like a lazy person. It's always going to go to the path of least resistance. If we create sufficient resistance at the bucket handle, which is this lower rib cage, then as we inhale, the bucket handle, the lower rib cage has too much compression, too much tension. Air is going to go away from that. It's going to go up. It's going to expand that anterior chest wall. So what that means is that we need to provide strategies to the patient or client that helps them bring the rib cage down and in to a degree, but then hold that on inhalation. So in order to actually accurately measure this, I'm gonna go through a self-tested shoulder internal rotation. What you'll find with me is that I'm actually limited on both sides, but my right side is more limited than the left. So, so I'll show you the right side here and then I'll flip around so you can see my left arm. So if I go into a starting position, I wanna make sure that my elbow is actually flat on the table. I'm going to bring the other hand to monitor the humeral head. When I feel this humeral head pop up, that's the end of the motion, right? And then I wanna make sure we're not lower than 90, we're in that 90 degree shoulder abduction position, right? So from here, I'm gonna monitor the humeral head. I'm gonna go down to internal rotation. As I go down, I feel a good amount of resistance about there. Yes, pretty limited. And I'm also starting to feel the humeral head want to come up. 90 degrees, abduction, hold onto that humeral head. And as I go down, you'll see I have a good bit more motion. I still don't have that full range of motion, but definitely more than the right side. The next test you'll want to do is to see if your patient or client has the ability to expand the chest. So you can do this by simply breathing, put one hand on the belly button, one hand on the chest, and then when they inhale, do you see their chest rise up? Now I will tell you there are two different ups. One up is chest going towards the ceiling, that's what we're looking for. The other up is chest going towards our head, which is what we're not looking for. This is usually more indicative of the accessory neck muscles helping to lift and elevate the rib cage, and it would look like this, right? You'd see everything start to come up. So again, one hand on the belly button, one hand on the chest, they take an exhale. As they inhale, do you see an expansion? And so I have the expansion, but when someone doesn't, you're gonna see really just the belly button hand move, and it will look like this. They'll take an exhale. As they inhale, watch this hand. And you just get that belly motion, right? They don't have the ability to expand. All right, so there are three simple strategies that we can use to help improve our patient or client's ability to bring the rib cage down. Remember, that's the true problem that we're trying to fix, because if we can get the rib cage down and create enough tension then when we inhale, we get the expansion, that expansion opens up and we get more internal rotation, right? So rem always remember the true problem as to what you are trying to fix. So the first strategy is going to be a balloon. A balloon is a dumbbell for your abs. It's just providing more resistance, right? So all we wanna do is have our patient or client exhale into a balloon and then they need to hold and maintain that tension as they inhale, right? So if you did four breaths, each breath should get more and more resistive and intense at your abs, right? So if your patient's doing it and they're just exhaling through the balloon and then inhaling and then exhaling and by four breaths, they don't feel the abs working more, that means that they've never created a change, right? We have to create change. The other thing you can do is you can have them breathe through the balloon and keep their hand on their chest. You can watch their chest, but they need to exhale sufficiently as they go through a balloon breathing exercise. The next strategy we can use can either be used with or without a balloon. And essentially, I tell the patient or client to take two exhales. Now, they're not really taking two exhales. They're just taking two points of emphasis. And what this does is this really helps those that are struggling to get air out. Because I know as we talk about it, it might sound easy, but there's actually 
a lot of challenge in it when someone's really in a rigid pattern where they can't move the rib cage. So two breaths looks like this. I'm gonna represent it with my fingers as one and then when I go to the next one. So we would take an inhale through our, through our nose, exhale through the mouth, hold that tension, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, Right, so you can hear those, those two separate points of emphasis. Again, a really easy way to get the rib cage to be able to drop down and in to then take a good inhale. The final strategy we can do is just what you see. I'm now in a sideline position and specifically, I'm on the left side. Now think about it, why would we want a sideline position and then why would we want it on the left side to improve right shoulder internal rotation? Well, remember, we're trying to compress the lower rib cage and expand the upper. And remember, we talked about air is a lazy person, right? And essentially, as we're creating tension from a sideline position, we're creating expansion in the opposite side. So this is an easy way that we can go through our breathing drills, exhale, and then inhale without the patient or client having to really focus much. Right, So it's a really easy tool for someone that's really struggling to get the rib cage to go down because essentially the position you're putting them in is setting them up for success. So we've now discussed the three strategies to improve exhalation, right? Remember, exhalation is going to drive a better inhalation and that inhalation is going to improve mobility because now we are able to expand the area that's too compressed. But how do we start to carry that through to exercises and training programs and treatment plans? Well, we carry the breathing strategies, right? So the patient or client needs to understand how to do the breathing right first. Once they understand that, we can then bring that to something like you would do in your normal exercise routine or a normal treatment plan. So an easy exercise that has a really good bang for your buck as it relates to the functional goal of improving shoulder internal rotation is a left side plank. Notice how I'm saying left side plank, not both sides, not a right side plank, but a left. Take the principle of our side lying strategy that we talked about, right? Side lying is now just progressed into a side plank. So yes, the patient will be working a lot more, but they still need to be able to breathe correctly. So you can use a balloon if you want, you can use the two breath strategy that we talked about, or if they're really comfortable with it, you can just go through it and have them exhale as they're going through the, the exercise, right? So all we're thinking about when we go through a side plank, again, there's different variations of it. I'm gonna go with the knees bent, but we're gonna drive the shoulder up, right? Because we're trying to get out of this shoulder and we're creating more tension at the shoulder blade. So we're pulling that shoulder back a little bit. Now, every time I cue a patient to do that, they turn their whole body. That's not shoulder retraction. So if there's a logo on their shirt, the logo stays facing you and you, they need to be able to press up and draw back and feel tension through the left shoulder blade. Then we're going to bring this rib cage up I also like to have them reach, and you can see how we're creating a ton of compression at this left rib cage, opening up this right side, right? And then there's really two routes you can go. You can hold, or you can go up and down. If we go up and hold, right, we're gonna go into our belt buckle, get all the things right at the pelvis and the rib cage, hold this position. As we go up, if we go through the hold, then we're just gonna go through the breathing drills that we went through, right? Exhale, create tension. Inhale, we should see this open up. If they're going up and down, then I would use the exhalation on the way up, inhalation on the way down. So it would look like this. We get into our compressed and expanded position. We take an exhale to drive up. Feel the abs, inhale on the way down. And then back up again. The whole time we're looking are they able to expand this right chest wall? So we went over the strategies and the side plank as far as how to progress that, but remember, your job isn't done. We then need to retest it. 
did the inputs that we just gave our patient or clients turn into the favorable output? The favorable output is the increase in internal rotation. So we go through again, same thing, monitor the humeral head. As we go down, you'll notice that after I did it, I'm actually able to get a good bit lower. I'm still not all the way down. I'm definitely more on the restricted side, but definitely more motion than before. Feels a lot better as I go down through this motion after I worked on about four breathing drills.